Good morning. Um, happy Sunday. Welcome to our fourth through sixth grade children's church today or whoever may be joining to learn about the book of Acts. Um, we may be Lent, but in our curriculum, we are in chapter 22 of our books, which is Acts 17, 1 through 18, 22. So if you want to find our story today, all you have to do is open up your Bibles to chapter 17 of the book of Acts and read through chapter 18, verse 22, and you will have our story today. Um, <clears throat> but in our own books, if you have them handy, we are on page 202. Um, so you're welcome to flip your books open and I'm going to go through our chapter today. And as usual, there'll be places where I stop and maybe explain a few things that aren't written in our curriculum, um, just to help us better understand the story. Um, if you'll remember that sometimes learning a little bit about what is going on around the Bible helps us understand the story better. It helps us tell the story in a way that we understand. So I may stop and point out a few things along the way, um, but we are on Paul's second missionary journey, part two. So we learned about the first part of Paul's missionary journey. Um, and so now we're going into the second half of Paul's second missionary journey. Um, Paul actually had three missionary journeys. So we have a little bit further to go. Um, so who is God in our chapter? I'm on at the very top of page 202. Um, and in this chapter this week, we are learning that God is the Lord of heaven and earth. And our lesson theme for today is that God is proclaimed to be the only true God. The only true God. And as we read, we'll figure out maybe why that is our theme for today. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to find this lesson, in the Bible, because all of this is from the Bible, you can look at Acts chapter 17, verse 1 through chapter 18, verse 22. Um, and that will give you the story. It could be fascinating to read the story today and then go back into the Bible and read it again, because there, I promise there are probably things that you pick up that you may not have picked up before, which is a lot of fun. So, our Old Testament and the New Testament revealed. In other words, what Old Testament passage speaks to our lesson today? And it comes from Ezekiel 33, 4. And it says, if anyone hears the trumpet, but does not take warning, and the sword comes to take and takes his life, his blood will be on his own head. Um, and just as Ezekiel the prophet was Israel's watchman, warning the wicked of God's judgment, so Paul the apostle preached of Jesus and warned those who rejected his gospel. And we'll see a little bit more of that today. So our story is titled Paul's Second Missionary Journey, Part 2. Um, I'm on page 203 if you want to join me. And without further ado, I'm going to read our story today. Paul left Philippi, glad to be free of the city's troubles. But as he, Silas, and Timothy passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia on their way to Thessalonica, trouble followed close behind. In Thessalonica, there was a Jewish synagogue. As was Paul's custom, he first preached in the synagogue. For three Sabbaths, he reasoned with the Jews and God-fearing Gentiles about the scriptures explaining how Jesus Christ had to die and be raised again from the dead. This Jesus of whom I speak is the Christ, the Messiah, Paul said. Some Jews, many of the devout God-fearing Gentiles, and many prominent women believed in Jesus. I'm going to stop there. So I know a lot of times when we read the Bible, sometimes we wonder, where are all the women, right? Um, but I wanted to point out that when it says many prominent women, they're not kidding. Um, in, Greco -Ro in the Greco-Roman world where the New Testament takes place, um, it wouldn't have been unusual for women to have prominent places in society. Um, 
So they may be a businesswoman on her own. She may be leading a position in the city or be married to a really prominent city official. Um, so Lydia, whom we discussed in chapter 21, is an example of a prominent woman. So, so I want to clarify that, that in the New Testament, there are a lot of really important women, and I am glad that our story pointed it out today. Um, so I am going to continue on. I am now on the third paragraph of our chapter, of our lesson today. Paul said, some Jews, many of the devout, God-fearing Gentiles, and many prominent women believed in Jesus. Other Jews, angry and jealous, met up with some of the city's rabble, or lower class people, at the marketplace and formed a mob that went through the city causing a big scene. The rowdy mob ran to Jason's house, where the missionaries were staying, and when they didn't find Paul, they grabbed Jason and some of the other new believers and dragged them before the city magistrates. The men who have been troubling the whole world are causing trouble here too, they shouted, and Jason has welcomed them into his house. These men are saying there is another king to name Jesus, and this is contrary to Caesar's law. The Roman emperors had made decrees forbidding anyone to predict any other king than a Roman emperor would rule the empire. Because Paul was preaching that Jesus was a king with a kingdom, and that he would come in judgment, the Roman magistrates saw Paul's words as a threat against the emperor, and a breaking of the emperor's decrees. The magistrates demanded tribute money from Jason as security against any further trouble and let him go. The sad news, though, was that Paul and Silas had to leave the city. The new church in Thessalonica was on its own. Um, so fun fact, that we believe that royal we, people who have been studying the Bible for a long time, think that Thessalonians was one of the first Pauline letters that was written, which would make sense because they had to leave Thessalonica early. Um, so it's kind of fun how those things work out, right? I am flipping to page 204, starting at the top. <clears throat> In the middle of the night, Paul and Silas moved on to the next town, Beria. The Jews in Beria were nobler than those in Thessalonica. They accepted the gospel with great eagerness, and every day they searched diligently through the scriptures. They wanted to make sure that Paul was preaching the truth. But the troublemakers from Thessalonica found their way to Beria and stirred up the crowds. The believers hurriedly sent Paul to the coast and put him on a boat to Athens, while Silas and Timothy stayed in Beria. Entering the famous city of Athens from the Piraeus Harbor, through one of its northwest gates, Paul was astounded by the magnificence and brilliance of the architecture of Athens. He saw the ivory columns of the Hephaestium. I promise I, trouble, I have some trouble with these names too, y'all. The beautiful temple dedicated to the god Hephaestus and the goddess Athena. The Tower of the Winds, dedicated to the eight wind gods, stood prominently in the Athenian marketplace. In the Parthenon, the temple dedicated to Athena, Polius, towered above other buildings from where it sat high atop the Acropolis. Seeing all these structures, Paul was provoked to jealousy for the Lord he served. How could the Athens construct such expensive temples and sculpt such, such intricate statues to gods that didn't exist. Everywhere he looked, he saw idols. It was as though the city was smothered in Greek, Roman, and Egyptian gods. With ev even greater intensity than before, Paul reasoned with the Jews and God-fearing Gentiles in the Athenian synagogues about who Jesus was. Every day in the marketplace, Paul talked with ordinary passerby who walked about the city. He even debated with the Greek Epicurean and Stoic philosophers. Some philosophers called him a babbler, and others a preacher of foreign gods, because he always talked about Jesus and his resurrection. 
the philosophers invited Paul to the Areopagus. Areopagus? <laughs> um, it was also called Mars Hill. <laughs> to debate with them about religion. So Paul stood in the middle of this prestigious place and spoke out, men of Athens, as I walked around your city and looked at your objects of worship, I saw that in every way you were very religious. While exploring Athens, Paul had seen an altar with an inscription to an unknown God. Because the Athenians feared that they might have missed a particular god, they erected this altar to whoever unknown god might exist. Paul then talked to them about Jesus, their unknown god. So these are some of the things that Paul said about the unknown god. First, he made the world and everything in it. Two, he doesn't live in temples made by man. Three, he gave his life and breath to all creatures. Four, he made man so that he could seek God. Five, he is not far from anyone. Six, he commands every man to repent of sin. Seven, he will judge the world in righteousness. And eight, he has raised this judge, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Paul talked to this prestigious group and the philosophers listened. Then Paul said, God has given proof of this to me. God has given proof of this to all men by raising the man he appointed from the dead. In a resurrection? Some of the philosophers mocked while others said, we'll hear you talk about this again soon. A few people believed and became followers of Paul, including... Dionysius, a member of the Erpagius, and a woman named Damaris. But Paul knew it was time to move on. He left Athens and traveled to Corinth. It was at the city of Corinth that Paul met Aquila and his wife Priscilla, tent makers who had been expelled from Rome by Emperor Claudius. Because Paul also was a tent maker, he stayed with them during his time in Corinth. Soon Silas and Timothy joined Paul. So I'm going to stop there. You may be wondering why did Emperor Claudius expel all of the Jews from Rome? Um, well, I can help answer that question. The Emperor Claudius issued a decree or a proclamation or a statement, um, a law, that all Jews should be banished from Rome. This came about because there was dissension between the Jewish community and the Christianity Christian community that was pretty new to Rome. Um, because of the disorder and disruption caused by the Jewish differing reactions to the message of Jesus Christ, the emperor expelled all of the Jews. Whether or not Pr Priscilla and Aquila were involved in the disruption um, is not really clear. The Bible doesn't really tell us. Um, it does appear, however, that, however, that they had come to faith in Jesus and were caught up in the emperor's decree. Um, they had become Christians, left Rome, and were settled in Corinth when Paul arrived there. So, so there was a lot of politics in Rome, and because of the disruption, that's why Emperor Claudius just told them all to get out. I am now on the third paragraph on page 205. Soon Silas and Timothy joined Paul. When the Jews in Corinth opposed and mocked Paul, he shook out his garments and said, your blood be on your heads. I am innocent. Now I will go to the Gentiles. Paul went to the home of Titus Justus, a Gentile worshiper of God and man of faith who lived next to the synagogue and talked to him about Jesus. Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, also believed, along with his whole family. Many Corinthians who heard Paul preach the gospel believed and were baptized. One night, Paul had a vision from the Lord. Don't be afraid, Paul, said the Lord. Go on speaking and, speaking and don't be silent, for I am with you. No one will attack or harm you and be certain that I have many people in this city who are mine. 
So Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half, teaching the word of God. After time had passed, some angry Jews went to Gallio, the preconsul of Archaea, and accused Paul of breaking the law by encouraging people to worship Jesus. So this Gallio figure, who is he and what in the world is a preconsul? Well, so taking the complaints that to Gallio was more a more serious action than bringing Paul before the mag magistrates in Thessalonica earlier. Um, this was because Gallio was a preconsul. In other words, he was a governor um, of the par province of Archaea, and his authority reached through all of the cities of the area. And if he had decreed that Paul be expelled from Archaea, his action could have been precedent for other governors to do the same thing, which would have really, really harmed the spread of the gospel. So it was kind of a God thing what happens next. Galileo wasn't impressed with their complaints. Instead of doing as they had hoped and stopping Paul from preaching, he said, this isn't a wrongdoing or a vicious crime. This is just a question of words in your own Jewish law. I'm not going to be a judge in this matter. Settle it yourselves. As the Jews left the court, angry Gentiles seized Sothenus, the ruler of the synagogue, and beat him. But Gallio paid no attention to what was happening. So it was kind of a weird God thing that the governor didn't think it was worth his time because that could have been really harmful to the spread of the gospel, right? But the fact that he ignored when the when the Gentiles or the the Gentiles seized the Jewish priest um, was probably indicated that a the people in that city probably had some problems with the Jews, unfortunately. And two, it probably meant that we can see how maybe Galileo himself maybe had some anti-Jewish sentiment. Um, the fact that he was willing to ignore that probably means that there was some there was some tension between the Gentiles and the Jews in that city. When Paul finished his work in Corinth, Silas and Timothy stayed in Corinth and Aquila and Priscilla left with Paul for Ephesus. After a short visit there, Paul sailed for Caesarea, leaving Aquila and Priscilla behind in Ephesus. I'll come back if it's God's will, he promised as he sailed away. After landing in Caesarea, Paul went to Jerusalem to report on his journey to the Jerusalem church before returning to Antioch for a much needed time of rest. And y'all, that completes our lessons on the second missionary journey of Paul. Um, as we hinted at the very beginning, this lesson's theme was that there is no other God bef besides God. And in our story today, we saw Paul strive to make a whole bunch of people understand that. Um, we saw him preaching to the Gentiles in Athens about their unknown God and how their unknown God was actually Jesus and he was the only God. Um, and this message had a lot of problems for him. There was a lot of times that Paul had to leave the city quickly because he feared for his life. Um, but God was always with him because the spread of the gospel was important. Um, so I hope that you learned something. Maybe if you're thinking about it, you can go back and read the passage in our scripture. Um, it's in Acts chapter 17, 1 through, through chapter 18, verse 22. It is all there. Um, and if you have any other questions, you are always feel free to email me. I will answer any questions you have to the best of my ability. Um, or if you just want to say hi, then I'm down for that too. So I hope you have a great Sunday. Um, I hope you learned something and I will see you next week, you guys. Have a good day.